أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين وعلى أصحابه المنتجبين وعلى جميع الأنبياء والمرسلين قال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد والفرقان الحميد إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون صدق الله العلي العظيم وقال النبي حبيبنا المصطفى صلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى أهل بيته وأصحابه أوصاني ربي بالإخلاص في السر والعلانية والعدل في الرضا والغضب أو كما قال صدقت يا رسول الله In the name of Allah most gracious most merciful All praises due to our creator our cherisher our nourisher and our sustainer. We bear witness there's none worthy of worship but Allah. We bear witness we believe in all the prophets who came in the great line of divine. And we bear witness that Prophet Muhammad ibn Abdullah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, is the final of all the emissaries of Allah. Al-Huffad, ulama, a'imma, qurra, brothers and sisters, elders and youth, I greet you with the Islamic universal greeting of peace. May the peace, the mercy, and the blessings of Allah be upon each and every one at this auspicious time of Jumu'ah in this beautiful house of Allah, in this most beautiful city in the world. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. This week requires our special attention. We are in the glorious month of Ramadan, and as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ramadan, Shahrum Mubarak, a month of blessing. And more than that, we are in the last 10 nights of Ramadan, this special month. This month of the Furqan, the month of Siyam, the month of Qiyam, the month of Maghfira and Ghufran, month of revelation, of fasting, of the night prayer, of forgiveness. The month containing a night, Fihi Laylatun Khairun Min Alfi Shahr, grander in value than an entire lifetime, greater and grander than a thousand months. It is Ramadan indeed. It is a blessed period, a blessed time, but a time in history of great turmoil and undue strife. Today, the last Friday in Ramadan is designated as International Quds Day, and thousands of people in over 100 cities worldwide, thousands of people, millions of people in fact, in over 100, 100 cities worldwide, including in Cape Town, will be expressing solidarity with the oppressed people of occupied Palestine. We in South Africa, of all people, realize that apartheid is a crime against humanity, and the Zionist Israeli government has deprived millions of Palestinians of their liberty and the property based on a degree of what we call apartheid. It has perpetuated the style of gross discrimination and inequality, a form of apartheid that has systematically incarcerated and tortured hundreds of Palestinians over the years, contrary to the rules of international law. It has in particular waged a war against the civilian population, in particular children and women, the confiscation of Palestinian land, the displacement of Palestinian people, the destruction of Palestinian homes and the decimation of Palestinian population, all of this continues to go unabated. We are in full solidarity of the struggle for peace and for justice in Palestine. This word solidarity, tadamun, which leads to ta'awun, that we are conveying here, is an important value for any society, in fact, for the entire global community. Solidarity is finding camaraderie, finding cohesion for a cause amidst the diversity that characterizes our societies. And the recognition of a set of common values, universal values, that portrays our common humanness and that does that with dignity and with empathy. And that's why Solidarity inspires ta'awunu ala al-birri wa taqwa cooperation on the basis of that which is good and that which is righteous. We are also aware of the struggle of the people of Kashmir 
under the brutal Indian domination, under an Indian authority that is increasingly anti-Islam and brutally anti-Muslim. We are, of course, in solidarity with the Muslims in Kashmir and all over in the Indian subcontinent who are victims of the bigoted BJP party and their thugs. We are aware of the plight of the Rohingya Muslims in Myanmar, formerly Burma, who have been described by the United Nations as the most persecuted people in the world. We are aware of the ongoing strife in Syria, the war between the richest two Arab countries in the world fighting against the poorest country in the world, Yemen, a bloody war in which, which now the UN has declared the world's largest humanitarian crisis. And this is both in two countries, Muslim countries, where there's devastation, Yemen and Sham, and both places for which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam prayed in a dua documented in the Sahih of Imam al-Bukhari. Rasulullah said, Allahumma barik lana fi shamina, Allahumma barik lana fi yamalina. Oh Allah, bless for us our Sham, our Syria, and the larger area around Syria, and bless for us Yemen. Again, the Rasul said, and someone said, Ya Rasulullah, wa fi najdina, what about our najd? And Rasulullah replied, Allahumma barik lana fi shamina wa barik lana fi yamalina. May Allah bless Syria and Yemen. Qalu ya Rasulullah wa fi najd. Fadhanuhu qala fi thalatha. I think the Rasul said it thrice. The narrator says, Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma. Then the Rasul still said, I pray for Sham and for, for Yemen, for Syria and for Yemen. And he said, what about najd? This is Sahih Bukhari, by the way. هناك الزلزال والفتن وبها يطلع قرن الشيطان. The Rasul said, I think, the Rasul replied, he said, from there will come tribulations and the horns of shaitan. All I wish to say, we are indeed in empathy and in solidarity with those who are innocent victims of war in Sham and Yemen for which the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has prayed as documented in the Sahih of Imam al-Bukhari. We know of Chinese internment camps in Xinjiang province where over a million Uyghur Muslims are being incarcerated and punished for their faith under the present government and under the pretext of re-education, but are actually being forced into brainwashing programs, over a million of them. They are being kept apart from their families, from their children, and they are tortured to forget their identity and made to denounce their religion. We are well aware of the cruel realities faced by our fellow Muslims in China, but where are the voices of denunciation by Muslim leaders? That's why we need to ask, what exactly are our leaders busy with? When will the heads of Muslim minority countries, or Muslim majority countries rather, put morality before money, human rights before greed, goodwill before personal interest and power? and speak out against what is becoming the modern world's largest campaign of ethnic cleansing. Where is the resolution from 53 nation organizations of Islamic cooperation, the OIC, which describe itself as the voice of the Muslims? Where are their voices? We are in total solidarity with the Uyghur Muslims, even if the self-absorbed, self-appointed leaders of the Muslim world remain cowardly silent about the suffering of our Uyghur brothers and sisters in China. This week, our special attention is also drawn at the local level. Last Thursday, the 23rd of May, was also 320 years since the passing of the one who established Deen at the southern tip of Africa, the person who brought with him Islam to the Cape, Abidin Tadia Jusup, popularly known as Sheikh Yusuf of Makassar, who arrived on board the Futbuk on 23rd of May, 1694. His place of banishment at Sanfreit became a rallying point for fugitive slaves, for other exiles, and those victimized by the colonial state at that time. 
It was Sheikh Yusuf's place that the first cohesive Muslim community in South Africa was born. These are our learned, brave, honorable, respected, exemplary, selfless, pious forefathers who came to the tip of Africa over 300 years ago. They came in most trying circumstances, some enslaved for their faith, but they were upstanding, faithful revolutionaries who established the roots of Islam, and we are here by the grace of Allah through their efforts. Tuesday, 28th of May this week, was 50 years since our Shaheed Imam Abdullah Harun was arrested, held in communicado for 123 days. Neither his family nor his lawyer nor anyone was allowed to see him for that period and martyred by the brutal apartheid forces. It was an honor to stand this week besides his daughter Fatima and his son, Muhammad, Dr. Muhammad Harun. In fact, it was very emotional because they did not know where Imam was kept. And someone informed, I think, from inside that he is being kept here and he was being tortured there, by the way. So they went there, Muhammad with some people from the masjid there in Claremont, and he called out his father and his father responded from the window. So when they arrested his father on the 23rd of May, he never saw his father, but he heard his father responding. And his father said, take care of my father, who was still alive at that time. And that was the last that uh, he heard of his father or any of his family even were in contact with his father whatsoever. And we were there accompanied by struggle soul stalwarts, people who were involved in the struggle. Imam Ahmad Qasim, Zubaydah Jaffa, Yusuf Patel, Farid Sayyid, people we ignore in their lifetime till they die. And then we hold massive memorial services to celebrate their lives while we never acknowledge their role while they are among us. Unsung heroes about whose underground selfless commitment and dedication many know so little. And those who were not there in the throes of the struggle may sit smugly in their armchairs and be critical unable to fully appreciate these unsung heroes who played a key role in the struggle. And these are the unheralded, unpraised, unacknowledged gems of our community. Imam Harun, by the way, was the head of the ulama council here. He was the head of the ulama, Hafiz, Imam. He was a fearless and courageous man, undergoing incarceration, underwent torture, pain of separation from his loved ones, all due to his selfless principle stand for the freedom and justice of the people of our land. Some among our people, even someone had the audacity to ask me, isn't it bid'ah to have 50? I'm really sick of this bid'ah story. I'm really, really tired of this bid'ah story. It comes from people who, may Allah bless them. Isn't it bid'ah to hold the 50th anniversary commemoration? What do you want to do? Forget? When last do you remember? You see, some among our people even say, but if he did not speak out, many other ulama at the time did not speak out. In fact, the vast majority were absolutely silent, even when he was in prison. They say, same like Imam, ha Imam Hussein, why did he go to Karbala? He was in Makkah, Medina, why did he go over there? They didn't have to go. They could have avoided bloodshed. No, this is a sickening mentality. Sickening mentality. Because so too did Subukwe and Mandela and Biko and Mulvi Kachalia and Ahmad Tibol and Dr. Abubakar Azwat. So also did they speak out and so also they were tortured. You see the difference between them and us? Is they had the guts and the courage of the conviction to stand up. You see, those who use such criticism against revolutionaries and struggle heroes are voices of cowards who do not have the guts to stand up for justice themselves. So instead of condemning, and even today, instead of condemning the injustices of openly oppressive leaders who are in cahoots with the enemies of Islam, instead of doing that, they deflect the issue by rather engaging in questioning the stance of those brave ones who fought. Did he have to go? What about the struggle they fought in, but did he have to go? Yes, they had to because they had the principal audacity to lay down their lives in their stand for justice for a cause greater than themselves. 
That justice, by the way, which has been one of the main assignments of all prophets, as Allah documents in Surah Hadid. Prophets who came throughout history, who came as beacons of light, who came all of them as models of excellence, as teachers, as liberators of humanity. And Allah reminds us in the Quran, among the primary mission of these prophets, وَلَقَلْ أَرْسَلْنَا رُسُلُنَا بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ وَأَنزَلْنَا مَعَهُمُ الْكِتَابُ وَالْمِزَانِ لِيَقُومَ النَّاسُ بِالْقِسْتِ They came so that human beings, humanity at large, may stand and live in justice. So we unreservedly, unapologetically, bid'a or no bid'a, remember our struggle heroes who fought selflessly and courageously for justice despite the personal consequences that they had to endure. Imam Harun's activism was personified, or rather it personified the ethical message of the Quran that he had memorized, Hafiz al-Quran, Imam Abdullah Harun. Bearing witness, you see, Shahada is the foundation of Iman, and Imam Harun lived the Shahada and he died a Shaheed. Not only did he live by it, he died for it. That's why he's called a Shaheed the one who testified with his life for the truth and for justice. May Allah grant him the highest in Jannah. They are inshallah launching tomorrow night a book here of Imam Harun. It's the book on Ramadan which he wrote and uh, it's published for the first time. And in that book also there's a foreword by some people and, uh, and also the dua which the Imam asked to make. He asked after his passing, he came in the dream of Sheikh Abdul Qadir at the Haram in Mecca, and he said to him, Tell my people to read the dua, dua munfarija. I would advise you, inshallah, to get the books. There aren't too many copies, but for the country they've printed. So please, if tomorrow night when uh, Brother Sattar or Sheikh Abdul Rahman or Sheikh Mahmoud announces it, please take it. And all the money from there, inshallah, is going for the impoverished communities. Like Imam Harun didn't take really a salary, he gave it to the poor, so we're continuing his tradition. Imam Harun's activism is such that it personified the message of the Quran. So we commemorate our struggle heroes who fought to uphold the principles of truth and justice, who manifested courage, sincerity, steadfastness, dignity, and unwavering devotion in times of great crisis and tremendous strife. We are in, indeed inspired by the activism. We are motivated by the altruism. We celebrate their precious lives, we salute them and cherish their commitment and treasure their legacy. Let us now conscientize ourselves looking at their lives with the responsibility of considering what is best, doing what is right and focusing on what is really important. Know where we have come from, realize that we are where we are, that we have benefited from those who came before us, giants upon whose shoulders we stand. Sometimes we look big because we are midgets standing on the shoulders of giants. We are in full solidarity with the families of the victims of apartheid. And we call upon the justice ministry, whether new one or old one, to prioritize and expedite reopening inquests into the death of Imam Abdullah Harun and the killing of other victims at the hands of the racist apartheid regime. A new cabinet was announced that impacts on the future of each one living in this beautiful country. And we wonder, we wonder whether this new government will lead us to the real liberation that so many of us and so many others have strived for. We still have a string of unbroken fundamental promises from those who were entrusted the baton of freedom by those who fought for liberation and those who paid with their lives. We are unfortunately still held captive by a reality in South Africa that suffers from crime epidemic, where we have an incredibly weak, corrupt, inefficient police system and justice system and a timid attitude towards combating crime. We are in a society where most people are still continued victims of unaddressed injustices and are still not afforded the opportunity to survive with real dignity. If we don't be careful, we're heading for the real revolution. So many from our communities have fought so bravely for freedom and justice. They have fought for emancipation from poverty, from racism, from bigotry, and all forms of discrimination and inequity. Freedom, therefore, should mean a better life for all. And by that standard, the journey to true freedom is still a very long one. 
So as the arduous journey to the path of true freedom continues, we as people of faith, as people of Iman, who have been an integral part of that struggle, must ensure that there is, locally and globally, a genuine focus on freedom for all, a continued pursuit for peace, for equity and justice. Justice, as we know, is linked to goodness and excellence. Inna Allah ya'muru bil adli wal ihsan. Justice linked to goodness. Justice, we should never forget, is also directly linked to taqwa, which we are trying to pursue in this month of Ramadan. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, kunu qawwamina lillahi shuhada bil qist. Wa la yajrimannakum shana'anu qawmin ala alla ta'adilu. I'adilu, be just, huwa aqrabu li taqwa. That is the closest practical, physical expression to piety. So in conclusion, as people of faith and as people of conscience, we are in solidarity with all those striving for justice, whoever they are and wherever they may be. And as we continue our pursuit for attaining taqwa, which is the objective of our fasting, let that pursuit of taqwa open our eyes to the realities, removing our debilitating ignorance and cleansing our hearts from prejudices. As Sayyidina Ali Karamallah Wajha described this taqwa, he said, فَإِنَّ تَقْوَ اللَّهِ دَوَاءُ دَاءِ قُلُوبِكُمْ وَبَصَرُ عَمَا أَفْئِدَتِكُمْ وَالشِّفَاءُ مَرَضِ أَجْسَادِكُمْ وَصَلَاحُ فَسَادِ صُدُورِكُمْ وَطُهُورُ دَنَسِ أَنفُسِكُمْ وَجِلَاءُ عَشَّايَ بَصَارِكُمْ وَأَمْنُ فَزَعِ جَعْشِكُمْ وَضِيَاءُ سَوَادِ ظُلْمَتِكُمْ Sayyidina Ali said, the taqwa is the medicine for your hearts, the sight for the blindness of your spirit, the cure for the ailments of your bodies, the rectifier of the evils of your emotions, the purifier of the pollution of your minds, the light for the darkness of your eyes, the consolation for the anxiety of your conscience, and the brightness for the gloom of your ignorance. Let us ensure that this Ramadan has truly enhanced our consciousness. We are as on a spiritual journey. And as we're journeying, I hope we've enhanced our consciousness and inshallah elevated our spirits, that it is Indeed, a pursuit for taqwa. And we stay on that path of pursuing taqwa, which we have committed ourselves to in this holy month of Ramadan. That taqwa, which is the criterion, the standard of human excellence. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna akramakum, inda Allahi atqaakum. The most honorable in the estimation of Allah are those who are most pious, those who have the highest taqwa. But remember, فَلَا تُزَكُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ هُوَ أَعْلَمُ بِمَنِ اتَّقَى Whatever you may do and whatever you may think of yourself, don't ascribe righteousness to yourself. Only Allah knows those who are truly pious. May Allah guide us to the ways of those who are pious. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah.